Hi everybody, it's Yvonne here. And here today I am uh, to share with you how I made this box. The purpose for this box slash suitcase is that I'm starting to get my Christmas uh, stuff ready, little by little. Uh, next thing you know, it'll be right outside the corner. Uh, so um, I wanted something to put some Christmas cards in to give as gifts. And this, if you're doing also a craft fair or something, I think this would be wonderful to add on and it'd be well worth it. People would enjoy it because it could have another purpose later. And this will hold a minimum of six cards, maximum probably 12. And let me show you how it opens. It just slides open like this. You just pull out the little tabs here uh, that mimics a, um, mimics a belt. And you just open it up, and as you can tell, I have all the cards in here. I just added six cards, six envelopes, just for to show you. And these are all dimensional cards, so you know you can put another six cards in there. And I finished all the inside to look as pretty as the outside. And this idea came from something I've seen on Pinterest from the Setia Motia Pew Tree. So it's not necessarily my idea, just modified for what I use it for. The belt slides underneath the handle and it goes like this. Now this particular box that I built is six inches by four and three quarters and it is two inches deep. So very simple to make, put a handle on and the most work you do is pretty much scoring. So let's get together and make one so you can follow me if you've never made one before and I'll show you exactly how it goes. By the way, this paper pad that I've used to make this one is to decorate it is from Gracia, Frank Gracia and it's called Moon Child. I purchased this from CFC uh, Craft Supplies here in Canada online craft store and the lady's name is Sandy and uh, if you join her um, Facebook Craft and Swap Canada page, uh, you will uh, receive a 10% discount. So you can't go wrong with that. So the price that she adds here, you, she gives you another 10% off of that. So you can't go wrong. Anyway, so this is my paper pack. This is the cardstock I used just because I thought it would be appropriate to do a suitcase type. If you have, you can use anything you want. It's a cardstock. A pretty decent sized car, heavy cardstock would be good, 80 pounds more would be good, 65 will work, it'll just be a little bit more uh, flimsy. So stick around because we're going to make this box from scratch, you can follow along with me, and we're going to have fun. Just one moment. All right, let's get started. What you're going to need for this particular project to make this cute, cute little box is two pieces of cardstock. 10 inches by eight and a half inches. So you take an eight and a half by 11, you take an inch off. So you would have one inch on each side. And then you score it. You will keep your strips, by the way. You're gonna take an eight and a half by 11. You're gonna cut it down to 10 inch, two pieces of it. And you're gonna keep those, those pieces because you're gonna need these to create the straps on top of the box, like so. So once you've cut off these pieces, you'll take both pieces, both of them, and you'll score them at two inch all the way around. Two inches all the way around. And once you've done that, I've scored them ahead of time for to try to save on a little bit of time because my videos sometimes can be long. And I score them at two inches all the way going around. Okay, what I'm using here, use whatever scoreboard you got. I have a Stampin' Up here uh, scoreboard that I've had for years, and uh, that's what I use. And I also have a small one, but in this particular place, we'll use a big one. Then you'll grab yourself a pair of scissors, and you are going to cut on the line on one on one piece of paper you're going to cut on the line and into like this and this is going to be your bottom box simple as that i like to cut them before i uh, before i burnish the the um the score marks i just find it easier but do it the way you're comfortable 
And as you can see, yeah, I just cut them as a, in an angle and that just doesn't bulk up the corner as much and makes it so much easier to make. There. So that's my bottom part. Now for the top part, you're going to do something a little different on one side. On one side here, you're going to cut off that full square where at the at the corner here where it's uh, it's scored on a small block, like a small square. And the reason you are doing this is to, this is going to be the top of your box, and this part here is going to attach to the back of the box so you can flip open your box. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing with the front part. So the back, this, I cut off two sides all the way around. I cut the pieces right off. And then on this particular piece, I will do the exact same thing as I did on this piece. I'm just going to cut it in an angle. This is going to become the top of the box. Now I'm ready for burnishing. So if I burnish these pieces, I'm trying off this to this base, guys. Uh, if you see me moving it a little bit, I'm going to have to figure out something to keep it right there. So I can stop the glare from coming down, but you guys can still see a lot better. So I'm going to take at this point, I'm going to take my bone folder here, whichever bone folder you have, and just score, just burnish your score line so they'll be nice and flat. And it's just so much easier when you get to assemble everything, when everything is nice and even. And it's simple. Any of you um, have leftover cardstock that you want to use up, that's a great way to practice. Um, if not, you know, if you're confident, you just go ahead. It's really simple, guys. You don't, it's not rocket science. It's just, you know, just a matter of having, you know, box. And once you get to make one, you can make any one, any size that you want. It really doesn't matter. All you do is you measure the base that you want and you add to the sides the addition of the sides. If you want a one inch and you want a six inch base square to make a six by six card, I would probably, this is going to hold some A2 cards, but if uh, you're going to make six inches, six, six inch square cards, some of you do, I would probably make the base here six and a half to fit the envelopes or six and a quarter, whichever you're, you're comfortable with, and add whatever with the height that you want because depending on how many cards you put in, that's what makes the difference. Now, our box is ready to be assembled. Okay, so you've been following me all along here, and all you do at this point is add the sides. So. Uh, I'm going to use a Nouveau Clear Dry and Craft Glue just because it's handy for me. And this also, uh, Sandy at CFC Craft Supplies can supply you with this glue. And probably different types of glue. If she hasn't got it right there, you just tag her and I'll tell you, she works like a charm to make sure that she can get anything that you are looking for. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it don't, but you don't know until you ask her. If she hasn't got it in stock, she will find it for you. So, there you go. You just use up and make yourself a square box. And if you do it all well, your corners will match and they'll become square just like a store-bought box. Okay? And just add some glue like this. And we're going to attach it and hold it for a few seconds so you can um, you can end up having yourself a nice little box. I like the new uh, glue uh, long term. I don't know how it holds because I haven't been using it that long, but for for the probably a year. And things have not come apart, but I don't always use it. I'm a, I'm a two-way tape kind of girl. I use that quite a bit, but in this case, 
to save on time, I'm going to use the glue, which I know most of you use anyway. All right, this box is done. That's the basics. So we're going to glue up the top piece, and we're going to do it exactly the same way for this piece here. We are going to add some liquid glue from Nouveau called the Deluxe Adhesive Clear Drying Craft Glue. And from Nouveau, and um, I'm going to add that. I want to make sure that it's square, like this. And some of you may be wondering, well, if you're making it the same size, how is it able to close? You'll see it's, uh, you don't have to make it a whole, you don't have to make it bigger period and it does close all right. Okay, but if some of you put in, add an eighth of an inch here, you, you'll be fine, but I wouldn't. Okay, so this piece, so you have two there in this piece here. How I'm going to assemble this this box is just like this. I'm going to add the box like that. So I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to add some adhesive. Oops. I'm going to add some adhesive all the way going down like that. This would make really nice boxes. Like I said, if you wanted to put a piece of jewelry or, uh, you know, a nice silk scarf or, you know, something not big, or even add some cookies in there. If, uh, you know, you're going to a, to a, uh, a festive uh, party, uh, you know, if you're going to dinner for someone and you like to bring a little hostess gift, you fill in with cookies or whatever you want. It's, uh, it's the box that that is appealing to give to the people. What you put inside is what you're comfortable with. See? So I've added this piece right on the back. Just as simple as that. Folds this way, just like you're used to seeing in stores. And there you have your box. And I normally take, at this point, I normally take the back piece and I make sure that I can bend it this way. And there's no problem. And it closes like that. It's perfect. It just, just fits, everything fits perfect. Now, to decorate the piece. That you can decorate with what you want. It, whatever you have available for you. So, what I normally do, what I've done with this one, which was a trial, uh, trial and error, learning how to build it up by trial and error, is I've grabbed a paper that I had in that piece in, in the um, Frank Gar Gra Garcia, but in this one here, I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, Graphic 45 Paper Crafting Fairy Dust. Um, just because it's there and I have enough. I don't have enough in the other one to, to make another box, but I do have enough here. And again, I've purchased this from CFC Craft Supplies and Sandy will be more than happy to help you guys out. I think this would make a beautiful, beautiful, yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna grab this piece. This piece will be absolutely gorgeous. And then I'm going to take my cutter and start cutting. Now, you're wondering, how do I manage to know what size to cut on this? I'll tell you, no matter what size your box is, for me, this I made this box at six inches. So how many inches do you want? Do you want it to cover the whole base, or do you just want it to cover a bit? Now, I personally like a little bit of edge to the side, like a quarter of an inch. So if I take a quarter of an inch on each side, that'll make a half an inch. So I'll be cutting my pieces at five and a half inches by, the same thing here, five and a half inches by four. Five and a half inches by four. So if I take this piece and I go five and a half, exactly like this, 
uh, five and a half by four. This should fit perfectly on top like this. Okay? Now, I'm going to need two pieces to do the outside box on this one. We're just going to cut two pieces because I'll tell you how I do the inside. Okay? So, my piece here, because it's, it's um, eight and a half inches, is four inches here. So, I'm going to cut it four inch and five and a half inches this way which is like that. Okay, now I have my two pieces for the top and the bottom. Now I want to know, okay, how much pieces do I need to cut in order to fit these pieces? Well, the, the side pieces is four and a half by two. I want the same thing. So four and a half will come four because I'm going to have a quarter of an inch on each side. And for two, I'm going to cut it at one and a half for a quarter of an inch on each side. Okay, so are you following me here how I measured that? Measured it at four, take off two, no, the four and a half, sorry, four and a half here, and I'm going to take a quarter of an inch on each side, so that'll just go to bring me at two, at, at four, and here's two inches wide, and I'm going to take a quarter of an inch for each side, so that's going to bring me at one, four, uh, at one and a half. So four by one and a half. So I still have some pieces left over this one. So I'm going to cut this at one and a half and see how much I can get out of this one. This is an eight by eight pad, by the way, and uh, by Graphic 45. You can't miss by Graphic 45. They're such pretty, pretty paper. I'm telling you, for my style anyway. So you see I have a big a piece here. So I want it, I want two by four, one and a half by four. So here's my two side panels right there. See how it fits well? Two side panels. Now I need to create my long end panels. So in order to do that, I measure again is six inches. So this piece will be at five and a half, five and a half plus a quarter and a quarter is six inches. And again, it's going to go for one and a half this way because the width, the, the height is all the same. So here I'm going to need two pieces of five and a half by one and a half. Two pieces of five and a half by one and a half. And I still have another page here. Oh, look at the pretty colors, eh? Oh, gorgeous. So I'm going to go one and a half. And this one here, I'll have to cut two because my page is only eight inches. But if you were using a 12 by 12 paper pack, you'd have no issues. You could use one strip and do two pieces. This is not an issue. It's just a, because of the type, the paper that I use, I just need to cut a few more. That's fine. Okay, so I said five and a half, right? So I'm going to gather these two together. I'm going to add it at five and a half right here. And now I have my two pieces ready for the top. So let's put it together. There's my box. And I'm going to add the pieces together. So this is Graphic 45, as I said, the fairy, uh, fairy dust. And uh, it's by Graphic 45. Beautiful. Very, you know, magical. You could do anything. I'm going to uh, be making quite a few of these because I want to make some for the Christmas cards, as I said. But I needed to figure it out. So this was my practice piece, and this is my second attempt. There you go. That's one piece. Now you could add some two-way tape, um, school-end tape, uh, which you can pick up also at, uh, at CFC Craft Supplies. I normal this is what I used on that box here it'll all work now if you have a design on the on like this particular one doesn't it goes all over the place but uh, if you did have a a pattern make sure that you put it right so when you open the box you're seeing the pattern the pattern's not upside down and you, it's easy to tell what side is the opening or not um, 
here's another one. Goes pretty fast. You know, once you get the idea of how to assemble uh, the box, the rest is pretty much pretty much easy. You can you can just dress it up the way you like it. You want to put some metallic on here. You can cut some metallic pieces and make it really a wow factor. You could almost wrap this in bling if you wanted to. You know, the, the really, and crafting, the sky's the limit. You can do so much. And, you know, I, I'm thinking Christmas, and some of you might be thinking, Christmas, we're just August. Yeah, we are only at the end of August. Uh, we're the 24th today. And, you know, our harvest festival is, uh, not harvest, but our uh, agriculture, well, harvest, I guess, uh, is on this weekend. And uh, because it is that time of year that things are starting to uh, pipe you down. And as a matter of fact, my granddaughter has her her horse there and she's showing her horse. And my granddaughter did some, some she came in first place with her horse. She has a draft horse that she rides to bareback. And uh, she also has a regular horse that she leases. But the draft horse is hers. And my other granddaughter, the youngest one, which is nine years old, she won first place for uh, a picture that she drew of a dog and framed it and so forth. And the other one is working the ice cream shop and quite busy with that so this is a and my grandson well he works at the co-op so he he's not able to do too too much other than do the cleanup which is going to happen monday they'll be busy cleaning up the, the place because there's thousands and thousands of people that come down and uh, especially where the weather is good it has been so far today this morning was a bit of rain but uh, it's supposed to clear up, so that's perfect. You know, you don't want it to be too hot because the kids ride their rides and they eat trash. And, you know, if it's too hot, you know what happens, right? They get sick to their stomach. And... But it's, it's good. They, they participate every year. And uh, the, the one with the horse is her. Well, she's a farmer all the way as far as agriculture, uh, not agriculture, but animals. And uh, she's good. She trains her dog. She trains everything. Okay, so we have the top of the box all finished up. You followed me all the way through. Now, what I did for um, for the remainder, you can do two different ways. If you wanted to, you can. Um, I made some corners for the box. See the corners right here? Because in a suitcase, there's usually some support in the corners. So to make it look the same, you could do it with pattern paper or you could do it with your craft paper, which I chose to do with my craft paper because I figured it would come, um, it would match more. You know what I'm saying? It would, it would look good with that. So I use this and I use the one inch punch. And if you don't have it, just cut a circle out, you know, pick a cup and measure because if you take like the inside of this it's about the same size you could you know make a circle a pencil and go from there but i'm going to cut a few of these out i have eight sides to do so i'm going to cut there's three four five six seven and eight. Okay, so now I have eight of these. So what I did in order to make the corners is I didn't score them, but you can if you want to. All I did was bend them, fold them like this. Okay, here's my, it's, you know, just as simple as that. I just folded it equally in two and matched the score lines here like this. And there you go. So you have like a, a four piece. Now I take my little scissors and I cut off one fourth. So I, I just cut off the one fourth and you end up having a 
piece that looks like this. Okay? This is how your piece looks. And be careful not to put it over here because it's not it's not going to you're not going to be able to open the box. You start by the corner and you add the corner like this and like this. And it it fills up the three sides. Let me show you how I did it. So with this piece, I just add glue like I did to add the decorated pieces. And I just add it to the corner, bring down the sides. And yes, it does cover some of the paper, but it doesn't, you'll see it, 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 it's fine. It is fine, fine, fine. As you can tell, it covers the paper there too. See, like this? So you do both corners doing the same. Just bend it and then fold it the opposite way. So there's like a cross inside. I'm going to take my scissors and cut out one fourth of this corner. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to add more glue. Now, to do the two sides where the box opens, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to add this. And then I'm not going to go through all the corners because once you know how to do these corners, you will do the exact same on the bottom, okay? You'll open the cover, obviously, and you'll do four corners exactly like this. But the back part, where you have a flap like this, you, you, you need to make sure that when you fold it, don't glue the cover sh shut tight is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to fold it and then um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut a piece off like that. Now with the opening here, see how here I've, I've, uh, I've matched them, right? Match the corner real tight. This here, make sure that you don't match you match it to the edge here and not like tight like that because you're not going to be able to open it up. So all I do is I add the glue like I did every other one. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's just that you just don't want to, you know, make your, your cover shut tight. And I just add it to the corner like I did all my other ones. Pulled it down. Pulled it down. And just made sure that it followed this piece here. And then this piece here went down like that. Because if you pull it tight, like I did the other ones, it kind of closes this corner. And you don't want that. You want to be able to open the box up. That's the idea behind that. Okay? So you're going to do all four corners the same way. And then, after you're done that, you're going to add on the straps. So let me finish this. Oh, I'll, I'll add on the straps and I'll finish that after while the camera's going. What I did with the straps is I started from the front. So this is the front that opens up, right? So what I did here is I started, okay, I want it to go approximately there. All right. Well, I'm not going to put any glue there because I want this to be able to slide out like so. So I'm adding this, I'm just eyeballing it, and I'm bending it down. Then I'm going to add the glue or tape, whatever you choose to do. And I'm just going to add it all, all the way down like that. Try not to put too, too much glue. And if you do, just rub it with your finger flat so your paper won't ripple. It's the only reason, really, because yeah, this is my front. This is my front, okay? So how far do you put it to the side? That's entirely up to you. I eyeballed it myself. But I mean, I added it enough to the side that I'd be able to open the box quite comfortably. Okay. This goes on over here. No. That's the front of the box. That's correct. 
Show you another little trick after it. This one here, I didn't quite do it, but you can see that you can fix it if you need. If you didn't, I started from this part. I did this one wrong, but I can still fix it. So from you, what you need to do is go up your piece, your strip that is one inch wide, like so. And this is your front of the box. So this is where I, I wasn't falling right because the front of the box needs to open so you can't go all the way around there. So you start from the beginning here, about that, I believe. If you want to measure it, you can. And this is about, oh, I got it at an inch, an inch and a quarter from each side. If you need to know a measurement and I just add this to the end and I wrap it around like this and this is what this is a proper way to do it not this one here I mean you can still finish it off but there you go because this if you do it this way this one piece is going to fit all the way around your box so you don't have like two pieces like this coming around okay and you won't have any um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start again because I don't I'm going to rip some of my paper off, but I'm going to cover it up. So I'm going to take another piece here. And don't do like I said the first time because it's, uh, it's not right. That's what it is when you learn on the fly and you make one, then you wait the next day to make another one. It's like, oh my God, how did I do that? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to cover this up like this. You won't even know that I've moved. I took it out. Like that. And bring it down like that. Fold it on the end and it'll go right around the edge. Like that. Isn't that perfect? Perfect. It looks like two straps on a suitcase. Now I continued this on with another piece. And what I did is I started from here and I glued the whole thing. So let's do this. But don't put glue up to the end, okay? Because that's that's going to be your part. Now, this is where the um, measuring could have come over. Like, because this is, I can't put glue up to the top. You have to, uh, you might have been better off measuring it first. But this is what I did here. And the rest, the remainder of it, is dry. Okay. I'm going to let that dry out a little bit like that and I'm going to add another piece which is I need another piece which is one inch one this is the VR memory keepers guillotine I know Tim Holtz has got one too I like it because I have a smaller one from Fiskar, but it only goes up to four inches, which is fine sometimes when I'm doing cards. And I did use it a lot, but when I found the six inches, that's exactly what I wanted. Because in most cases, um, that's the size that I need. Oh, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here. Okay, let's concentrate a little bit here. I'm going to do this. And I got the same width hanging out on this end. Uh, let me try this again like this. 
I'm babbling too much and I'm not paying attention. And that's what we tell our kids all the time. Stop, stop. <laughs> I'm just going to pull the glue out of that because I don't want that to be sticky. Get to be like that. If I take a wet one, I can pull it right off. And it'll work just the same. Because this is just water based glue, so. There. Perfect. It even been a little better because it's got the fibers are wet. Okay, so now we have our straps. This is the straps. So what I did here is I just cut it in a point. Nothing too extravagant there. Just if you have a fancy uh, corner that you want to use go for it i don't have any so this is how i do mine not quite uh, fancy but it works and then i take two pieces about a half an inch and what i did is i just glued it down so i took one piece and the piece was two inches long so I cut out two pieces at two inches long. One. Oops, caught on the glue. And two. Like that. And all I did here was this time around, what I did is I added some glue dots on each side. That's how I did this one, but you can do it the way you want if you still want to use the glue. But to make it a little quicker, I all I did was add it across like that. And you can see that. And the same thing for this side. I added a small dot on each side, and I'm using glue dots here. And purchased from Sandy down at CFC Crafts supplies she's uh, in BC by the way and there just like that and then you can add maybe I pushed it just a little too I should have raised it back pull it out easy 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 get it a little closer so to be honest, you should be adding it an inch from the edge of the box. And that secures your, your edge here. Just fold this up like this. What do you think? Isn't this some sweet? Huh? Isn't this sweet? Just absolutely love it. It'll fit as long uh, to the length that I added it there, but I like to have it just oops it was my paper I'll have to fix that which I can you can fix anything in crafts right you can do anything at all so and your, your piece fits there like that Isn't that cute what do you think and then all I did was grab some rags that I that I had but you can use anything that you want uh, you can put embellishments you could use instead of using a brad what I did I used brads and I cut off the ends and just put some glue dots and added it on each side in order to show that it was this one here was a little bit more industrial but you could use anything that you like if you wanted to um, bling it up a bit you could use uh, you could use some I have no. Yeah, you could use that. I just find that it's, it looks better with uh, with some some of the brads, might as well say, because the hinges are are the right size. Okay, so now we have the box and it's closed. Now we go to the inside. You know what I'm saying about dressing it up here just like this one here so we'll leave that as is now to dress the inside what i did on this part is 
I measured this piece here, which was six inches, right? But I went down to, to uh, five and three quarters here, and I cut off the whole piece. So, it's not going to be big enough. So, what I did is I used an alternative piece of cardstock to match. Um, in this case, I have really nice flowers on the outside. I could use, uh, let's, let's, I'm going to use this one because it has uh, sayings all inside. So I'm going to cut this at five and three quarters. Five and three quarters like this. And then I am going to score it. I'm going to start. So this is five and five and three quarters long. And then I'm going to score it because the inside of the box here is where's the end again? Things are starting to get a little messy. This is a four and a half. So I'm going to score it at four and a half at four and a quarter. Or should I? Four and Yes, four and a quarter. And we know this is two inches. So I'm going to go four and a quarter, five and a quarter, six and a quarter. Right here. And this should fill out the back end. So if I add this in here, this should fit just like that. And that's exactly what I want. Can you see? That's exactly what I wanted. So all I did at this point is add whatever adhesive that you wish. I I find that um, I use adhesive liquid wise because I found it easier to set set into the box if I wanted to because it doesn't fit snug. So I wanted a, just a bit of size. I added it to the middle of the bottom of the box, like that, and like that. And then you can take your your um, bone folder or your hand or, or whatever you want and just kind of flatten it out the best that you can. Just like that. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Then... We know that this is five and three quarters, so there's a remainder here of piece on that eight by eight piece. So all I did was cut off the edge. Now you could do it reverse if you didn't want the split to be there. That would be totally up to you. Like that. And then I added glue to here. So I'll just put it the same way. Oh, it's cut the wrong different. Okay, I see it now. Okay, that's not going to work anymore. All right. Now, I have my box. Is totally done. Then I took some more and I cut some more pieces and added it all the way around here, which made for this box here. Now, what I did is once I cut a piece for the top part in here and I added this, I just took my one inch punch here and I just went at the center of my cover and I just popped it off 
in order to make it easier when everything is snug inside the box um, it just makes it easier to um, makes it easier to open because when it's closed like that the box is closed like so it's so much well it's not real snug but it, it closes real tight with the weight inside and you want to be able to pull it easily and because this box is fully closed there's no edges this gives you kind of a thumb to hold the bottom in if you know what i mean so this is my box i added some like i said some uh, little pieces here to dress it up you could put buttons there that would work too because this is what this represents off the brads and i just cut off the wings on the brads is what i did and i glued it down and on this particular paper pack there are um cards um, so you wouldn't have to necessarily put sending you hugs you could add if you were going to make it a theme you could add some of the cards that um oh maybe i don't have any more but i know they are oh, right here see how there's there's cards i could build up a scene right here with the cards too that would be very pretty but i want to build it like this so it stands like so okay just like this way sending hugs and how i did the um the handle is i took a two inch piece a one inch piece i'm sorry one inch piece just like this and i just added it to the edge like that and when i put my straps and i put them underneath the handle so i glued it up to the strap right here and then i can enter my strap inside inside the edge like this so a person can literally hold it down and hold it by the handle like that after i finish the box added all the details that i put into this one what i did is i took out my districts distress oxide by ranger and my sponge dauber and i did all the edge because that's i wanted to have like a vintage look but it's entirely up to you what you want to do in this particular one i had some i had dyes i have dyes with the shadows sending and hugs so i cut four shadows and the same as the hugs i cut four shadows and four words i glued them together to make it more thicker like to to make it more dimensional and then i added a piece of dimensional tape in the back and i put it on the box it's it's just beautiful like i absolutely love it i think it's it's charming it can be elegant if you like you can use it later on you can tell by the paper i've added it's totally finished on the bottom and it, it's really pretty you could even wrap your cards in tissue and put your own little sticker on the tissue closed or tie it with a ribbon make it really elegant i mean you know once you know the the how to make the box the base and the top the rest is once you've made one you could do a second one you do a third one you, next thing you know you're flying so this is yvonne i'm going to close off for now it's probably a nice little long video but um I'm not quite sure how to show it to you guys on a shorter scale. If you've enjoyed this video, please add a like to my page. And if uh, you like what I do, please subscribe to my YouTube page at uh, YouTube front slash July Abby, which is the year, the month I got my dog, which I called Abby. So July Abby. And um, leave comments. I would love to hear from you guys. This is Yvonne and I'm signing off for now, but have a wonderful day and most importantly, be happy. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.